Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this third and concluding lecture on democracy. We have discussed in previous lecture um, the idea of democracy, how it has become the legitimizing idea of our time, so much so that many undemocratic or authoritarian regime also justify their rule in the name of democracy. But for a very long time democracy was also equated with the idea of mobocracy or mob rule. So, it has uh, negative connotation, but in contemporary modern times all thing that is good and virtuous is associated with democracy and therefore, it leads to a lot of confusion, uh, misinterpretation or misuse of this term democracy which we have discussed in the first lecture. In the second lecture we have discussed different models of democracy and today we will focus on the challenges or some of the criticism to democracy and in the last part very briefly we will discuss the um, idea of free press and how free press is related to the functioning or the effectiveness of uh, democracy in any society. So, to begin it uh, in uh, modern times as we have said though the idea has become a legitimizing idea of our time. But that does not mean that uh, democracy do not face criticism or challenges and there are uh, multiple challenges and limits to modern democracy and one of the biggest challenge is to define the term precisely. So, as we have uh, seen in the previous lecture there are different uh, conceptualization, there are different meanings that is attached to democracy and that creates a kind of confusion about defining the term precisely. So, whether it is uh, about certain procedures which needs to be followed before a country claims itself to be a democratic country or there is something more to that. So, in the procedural or substantive notion of democracy, we have seen that how democracy is not just about me uh, following certain procedure, but it is also something which empowers, which is about the substantive transformation in the lives of individual and community. So, um, to define then this term precisely remains one of the biggest challenge. So, there are uh, many people, many groups, many societies with their different understanding, different conceptualization of democracy and it is often seen as which is true uh, democracy and which is false democracy which is bourgeois democracy and which is real democracy and all those debates creates this confusion which makes it almost impossible to define the term uh, democracy and that remains one of the biggest challenge. And uh, the reason for this is the ubiquitous use of the term that means, everyone now claims to be a democrat and to identify or to say someone as undemocratic or a society undemocratic it is seen as um, offending. So, uh, this use however, uh, the ubiquitous use of this term democracy makes it very uh, difficult and the association with the virtuous or good. So, everything that is good or virtuous is seen as uh, related to democracy and therefore, its virtues or vices are seldomly discussed or analyzed dispassionately. So, this emotional or the psychological association of everything that is good and virtuous with democracy makes it impossible or very difficult to analyze or to study the virtue or the vices of democracy in a very dispassionate manner. So, people will have a kind of very passionate understanding or argument about the 
merits or the merits of democracy to study it dispassionately is the biggest challenge political thinkers have criticized democracy from different perspectives and that we have seen how and on what ground they criticize democracy now broadly uh, speaking there are two kinds of criticism to a uh, democracy one which questions the very idea of democratic rule. So, for a number of theorists and scholars, democracy is in itself a bad uh, system of rule because it uh, delay the thing, it postpone the thing and it is almost impossible to arrive at any consensus. So, it is about the frustration. If there is some quick measures that is needed to be taken to protect the society or to some immediate response to the uh, circumstances uh, is almost difficult in a democratic setup and basically it leads to polarization in the society, manipulation, coercion, corruption and so on and so forth. So, in um, many thinkers, their conceptualization of democracy and their criticism to democracy is not just that its practices are bad, but the very system of rule that is based on the number is itself unjustified and therefore, there is one set of criticism which questions the very idea of democratic rule. Then we have the another um, set of thinkers or the intellectuals which questions the processes or the functioning of democracy even when they agree with the ideal of democratic rule. So, the idea of democracy is not questioned but they questions the very functioning or the process of democracy. So, that means that uh, they argue about the ways and means to make a democracy more effective, more efficient uh, system of rule. They do not however, question the very idea or the ideals of democracy that is based on the consent of the uh, rule. So, they do not necessarily oppose democracy as rule of the people, by the people and for the people kind of uh, understanding that ideal of democracy that it is ruled by the people directly or indirectly through their representative for the benefit of the people. So, that uh, understanding of democracy or the ideal of democracy is not challenge, rather they seek to expand or question its popular definition. So, the uh, possibility of doing a lot of undemocratic things or in the popular imagination the various uh, vices or various corruptions or the uh, undemocratic means that is deployed, they questions those practices and tries to expand the ideal of democracy. So, in their work they distinguish between democratic principles that are effectively implemented through undemocratic procedures or undemocratic principles that are implemented through democratic processes and variations of the same kind. So, in their studies, they uh, tries to analyze or explain how certain uh, democratic decisions are or can be taken by undemocratic uh, procedures or undemocratic system of rule or contrary to that, how in a democracy also it is possible to um, take or implement certain undemocratic uh, policies or decisions. And then there are a number of variation in between. So, it is possible that a uh, undemocratic or authoritarian system of rule may take decisions which is for the benefit of everyone, which is closer to democratic decisions. And in contrary, there is also the possibility that within a functioning democracy, there is the possibility of the undemocratic uh, decisions taken by the government. So, critiques of democracy would agree however, with Winston Churchill a famous remark that no one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government except all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. So, the argument here is that democracy as a system of rule or a mechanism to govern the society is very far from perfect. So, there are a number of vices, a number of uh, defects in the democracy. However, 
in comparison to the other system of rules or other system of governing a large society, democracy remain relatively much better uh, system of rule that is based on the um, consent of the people or that works for the interest of the people. So, there is not a group or a single individual uh, for which benefit the whole system operates, but it is for the benefit of larger society or everyone in the community that uh, the legitimacy of rule or the democratic rule rests. So, in Plato, Aristotle, Tocqueville, John Stuart Mill, Soom Peter, Robert Dahl, Habermas have all explained the critical aspect or what Michael Mann called the dark side of the democracy. So, uh, they have all explained these uh, demerits or defects of democracy. So, for example, Plato in the trial and death of Socrates wrote that the wisest and most just of all men have demonstrated the defects of democracy and of popular rule. Uh, he decried democracy because according to him, the people are not trained to select the best rulers and the wisest courses. So, uh, for him the idea of the philosopher king who is uh, intellectually uh, sound enough or competent enough to take the state uh, forward is a based system of rule rather than democracy where uh, the most of the people are not uh, trained or competent enough to select their rulers and also to take the wise uh, decisions that um, affects the whole society. So, for him uh, uh, the best uh, system of rule is the rule by the philosopher king who is knowledgeable, competent or visionary enough to take the country forward. So, uh, the Plato we have this uh, criticism against uh, democracy which is seen as based on uh, the consent of those who do not have the training or the competence to either select their uh, best rulers or to take wise decisions. So, democracy enables a man with gift of eloquence and oratory to get votes of the people and secure public offices. So, it is possible that in a democracy that a man with gift of eloquence or oratory to get votes of the people and secure public office, but it is possible that such man may turn out to be thoroughly selfish and incompetent who may ruin the state and lead it to disastrous consequences. So, the argument uh, against uh, democracy is that since people are not trained or competent enough or prudent enough to select the wise rulers in that societies or in such circumstances it is possible that a man with uh, eloquence or um, having great oratory or communication skill can manipulate the voters and secure the public positions. But after the securing public positions that person may turn out to be absolutely selfish and also incompetent and that may lead to the ruining of a state and also the disastrous consequences. So, it is possible in a democracy where uh, such men with absolute self interest and incompetency also occupy the uh, public positions uh, and that will be the disastrous for the state and the community. So, therefore, he questions the democratic system of rule. In Aristotle what we find that in his uh, classification of normal and perverted forms of government, uh, Aristotle placed democracy among the perverted form of government. So, the opposite of democracy for Aristotle which he considered as the ideal state is polity. So, Aristotle placed democracy among the perverted that means a system of rule which is corrupt or which is not uh, really for the interest of every section, but in the name of that larger or the common interest it uh, uh, perpetuates or it represents the interest of uh, very uh, few people and the decisions that it takes is not really beneficial for the every uh, member in the society. So, why he consider it as a uh, perverted form of government? because it signified the rule of mediocre 
seeking their selfish interest and not the interest of the state or every member of the state. So, according to Aristotle, democracy is based on a false assumption of equality. It arises out of the notion that those who are equal in one respect or respect that is law are equal in all respects be it social, economic and so on. So, because men are equally free, they claims to be absolutely equal. The challenge is that the expertise and abilities is reduced to numbers while numbers are or can be uh, manipulated. So, in democracy what happens? The uh, expertise or the talent or the abilities of individuals are reduced to number. So, a philosopher or an artisan or a farmer will have the same, uh, uh, same value or are of equal worth and that Aristotle, uh, that is for Aristotle a problematic proposition in a democratic rule which do not uh, distinguish between the man with uh, the vision or intellect or the man who is not as competent uh, intellectually or uh, literally. So, in this uh, setup of uh, democratic rule, uh, what matters really is not the worth or the intellect of a person, but the uh, number that each person carries one uh, or the same uh, value and that uh, is something which can be manipulated. So, the 10 philosophers is equal to the 10 farmers uh, or say 10 artisans and so on. And in this system of rule, there are also chances that people can also be misled or easily misled. So, therefore, uh, Aristotle argued that a mixed constitution that is a combination of aristocracy and democracy as the best possible form of government and he is a critic of uh, democracy which he theorized as a perverted form of government. Tocqueville in his famous uh, book Democracy in America, which is uh, a classic work on democracy where he appreciates the culture of democracy that prevails in American society. However, provides a criticism of democracy by arguing the tyranny of majority. This tyranny of majority is that the decision taken by majority must be followed or has binding effect on everyone, particularly those who are not from the majority uh, culture or the community. So, the minority in a democracy always face uh, this threat from the decisions taken by the majority. And he explained the threat that democracy posed to minorities and individual liberty. So, the individual liberty and the minorities are always at the um, mercy or under the control of the uh, decisions taken by the majoritarian rule. So, it creates a kind of tyranny where the majority rules prevail at the cost of minorities rights or the individual uh, liberty. So, the democracy permits the tyranny of majority and therefore, he is also critical of this uh, demerits or defects of a democratic rule. He particularly feared its cultural repercussions. So, uh, the decisions of the majorities are forced or have binding effect on the minority. Similarly, John Stuart Mills and we have discussed Mills uh, uh, support for the freedom of a speech and expression and liberty also argued that for all his defense of democracy and political participation. He also considered majoritarianism like Tocqueville and mediocre government as the biggest weakness of democracy. So, uh, democracy in a very procedural sense is a number game. In a democratic structure, only those party or groups get the opportunity to rule who has the number uh, uh, that is the majority in their side. Similarly, moving on the classical elitist theorist like Pareto, Mosca and this we have discussed in models of democracy, they criticize this idea of democracy as a system of rule where it is based on the consent or the popular will. They argue that the political power in every society 
has always been in the hands of a minority and that is the elite. So, according to them these elites are able to rule or dominate due to their ability to manipulate or coerce. So, uh, these uh, elitist theories uh, or particularly the classical elitist theory like Pareto and Mosca questions the ideal of popular participation and uh, participation of people in the process of governance. For them it is always the minority uh, or the uh, small elite in any society historically which governs the rule and that ability to govern the rule and the chances to govern uh, for the elite comes from their ability to manipulate and coerce. C. Wright Mill similarly uh, provide a kind of sociological explanation to the elitist theory in United States where he talks about the power elite in American political system which dominated executive power and how these elites are closely knit sharing the same background and common values. So, these small power elite in America military leader, economic leader or the uh, political leader, they are closely tied or knit together and share the same values or cultural uh, sensibilities which enables them to manipulate the system or to uh, rule the rest of the society. So, the elitist theory of uh, democracy particularly uh, criticize this idea of popular participation in the system of rule where they believe that this rule is basically ruled by the minority. However, they also argue that how to make it uh, acceptable is by allowing that the elite uh, or that uh, elite section is open for the new members. It is not a closed kinship kind of relationship where the entry or exit is closed. So, in this uh, power elite or the elitist theory of uh, democracy, you have the flexibility of uh, new members joining and those who are no longer relevant or credible moving out of this power elite. But however, democracy or democratic system of rule is still the rule by the elite, the minority section of the people. So, that is their criticism to the democracy. Similarly, socialist and Marxists shared the same view that in liberal democracy political power is used to protect and advance the interest of a minority that is the bourgeois class or those who have the ownership of property. So, the inherent contradiction in a liberal democracy according to the socialist and Marxist is that it provides political or legal equality in the absence of social economic equality and in the absence of social and economic equality political and legal equality makes a uh, little sense. So, uh, they are very critical of the social and economic inequality that prevails in a liberal society when though it protects and promotes political and legal equality. So, that is their criticism to democracy. Now, James Bryce is one of the greatest champions of democracy and is most sympathetic critic. So, he criticizes the democracy, but also he is a champion of a democracy or democratic system of rule. And in his two monumental work, the American Commonwealth and the modern democracy, he has mainly treated democracy as a form of government. So, it is basically about uh, ruling or governing the society. And uh, as we have discussed that uh, democracy is not merely a system of rule, but it is also to do with how people and community govern themselves. So, the idea of Swaraj for example, in Gandhian philosophy expand the notion of democracy as self rule much beyond the rule of government. So, the Swaraj is not just freedom from uh, British or external uh, interference but it is also about how individual or community themselves govern uh, itself. So, it is not just about the system of rule, but it is also about how individual and community internalize the democratic principle to govern themselves. And that uh, here in James Bryce, we see that largely democracy is taken as a system or a form of uh, government. So, he defines democracy as the rule of the people expressing their sovereign uh, will through the votes. So, the um, popular participation 
and expression of the sovereign uh, will is through vote and therefore, in all the democracy the periodic election say every 4 year, 5 year or 6 year uh, the election must be held and election is the time where the electorate that means, people in that uh, country collectively express their will or express their support or give the mandate and that is the occasion which when uh, a party um, seeks or uh, tries to uh, ensure uh, their support among the electorate. So, um, this uh, uh, voting exercise in democracy therefore, is a very significant and powerful tool for expressing the popular will or the popular uh, sovereignty uh, in a society and that gives uh, legitimacy to a party to rule. So, for example, in India today, BJP is the party which is uh, ruling. Prior to BJP, you have Congress led UPA and um, in 2014 election, people did not uh, give mandate to the UPA, but in 2009, they did reaffirm their support for the UPA and therefore, you have the two uh, terms for the uh, UPA, UPA 1 and UPA 2. Now, in 2014, people thought that BJP will be a, uh, a better party to govern them for the next 5 years and if you have election in 2019, there again people will have the opportunity and um, a scope to express their collective will and to give mandate to a particular political party to govern themselves. So, democracy in uh, James Bryce um, understanding is seen as a system of rule where the uh, uh, and this rule is for the people by the people through their representative. The people uh, participate in this uh, system of rule and express their sovereign uh, will through their votes. So, finally, he reduced this system of rule to the majority. So, those who get the majority of votes or majority of shares in the uh, assembly or in the parliament among the elected representatives of the people they get uh, the opportunity to form the government. So, it is a system of rule which is based on the uh, consent of the uh, people or the electorate and uh, those who secure the majority of votes among the electorates get uh, the opportunity to form the government. However, he um, enumerated six uh, evils or defects of the existing uh, democracy. The first is the power of money, interest to prevent administration or legislation. So, in all democratic countries, you see the uh, exercise or the influence of those who have the control over economic resources or the money power. So, those who have ownership of resources, they tend to influence the functioning of administration and legislation which is supposed to work according to or for furthering the interest of everyone. The second is the tendency to allow politics to become a trade entered for gain and not for service. So, in the democratic uh, elections basically the uh, exercise is merely to gain and lose and largely uh, those who compete for uh, position of power forget that the whole exercise is for the service of the people. So, the moral and the ethical aspect of democratic system is somewhat compromised when the actors, uh, for example, the political parties or the political leaders or the politicians in democracy fight election only for gaining and losing. Democracy, which ideally should be seen as something more than losing or winning the election, it is about serving the society or uh, taking the society together is reduced to a kind of uh, polarizing politics or partisan politics where uh, the whole exercise of election and democratic process is about winning and losing and the sense or the purpose of service is somewhat uh, compromised. The extravagance is again the cost of elections and so on is so huge that it is almost impossible for uh, those who do not have means 
or those who do not have enough resources to contest the election. And even if they contest their chances of winning, the proportionality of their winning in comparison to the other candidates and their expenditure reduce their uh, chance to get elected. So, uh, the extravagance is the another challenge or another defects or demerits of modern uh, democracy. The next is the failure to evaluate properly the skilled men and to abuse the doctrine of uh, equality. So, in democratic system as we have uh, discussed in our previous lectures, it is about a number, those who secure the maximum or the majority of votes uh, get the position of power. Now, in securing those power, there is no discrimination on the basis of ability of a person, whether it is based on his intellectual capacity or his or her abilities or expertise in particular domain. The equality is seen as um, the sameness or the uh, uh, identical. So, every single individual in a democratic structure is treated as one and the same or identical to each other without any discrimination even based on their abilities or expertise. And that leads to a kind of failure to adequately or properly assess the skill of the person. So, in democracy what matters is the number and number is one and same for everyone without any consideration of their skill, abilities or expertise. And that is the biggest drawbacks of uh, democracy as we have seen while discussing Aristotle idea of democracy as a perverted form of government. Then uh, the party politics is the another uh, defects of democracy uh, where the party's objective ideally should be to provide alternative or to uh, provide a platform for the people to express their views, to come together, to participate in the uh, political process. We have seen in the functioning uh, democracy, there is also the uh, constraint of the representative of people who have uh, fought or won election on the basis of a particular party's ticket. Their expression or their expression of public interest is somewhat curtailed by the party line. So, the party and its ideology dictates or uh, restrains the representative of people to express themselves freely. So, uh, the idea of whip in modern democracy where party ensures that the uh, candidates who won the election uh, from their party must express in a particular way on particular issue and that is somewhat restraining for the representative of people to express themselves. And also the political parties mix the whole process of election, uh, not about making people aware about the democratic system or providing true alternative to the people, but uh, it uh, perpetuates uh, the same uh, policies or same kind of policies where the uh, real change or transformation in the economic or social sense is not very effective and yet in the political or uh, in the popular discourse, it seems that different political parties providing different alternatives uh, to the people. So, the political parties in a way first restrain the democratic process in a sense the representative of the people who have fought or contested the election on a particular uh, party tickets are restrained to express their views on a particular issue uh, according to the party whip, which is uh, not in accordance with the democratic principle of expressing the interest of the people they represent rather than the candidates tend to represent the views of their party and not of the people. So, political uh, party politics in a democracy somewhat constrains or limits the functioning of democracy. And, um, finally, the tendency of politician to play for votes. So, all the uh, consideration or calculation in the democratic politics for a politician or a leader is to secure vote and they uh, then lacks the uh, courage to take uh, decisions um, which is compromising their uh, votes or their um, support base. So, uh, usually uh, politicians uh, do not uh, 
take the risk of uh, losing their vote and all the policies or decisions that a government or a party in power takes in a democracy is about securing the maximum vote and how to manipulate the vote. So, these are some of the defects that James Bryce uh, argues in a democratic system. So, however, Bryce points out that the first three of these evils that is the power of money, the tendency to allow politics to become a trade and extravagance is common to other forms uh, of government too and not specific to democracy. The last three is the um, defects or demerits which is associated with democracy, but it can be resolved also. So, major problems of democracy include self-interest and irresponsibility of uh, those who exercise power. So, the party or the leaders are not uh, as much committed to uh, promoting the collective interest as to secure their own position or their own um, self-aggrandizement at the cost of common interest. Now, moving on to the major challenges of democratic processes and outcomes, the some of the major challenges are the political instability. So, that is one. So, democracy in most of the societies is indirect form of democracy where people govern themselves through their representative and sometimes as we have seen in India for a very long time, no one party got the complete majority on its own and therefore, they formed the government which we call coalition government and that coalition government may uh, always risk the chance of losing the uh, majority support and this element of uh, democracy and also the frequent elections uh, lead to a kind of challenge where the political stability in a country is always uh, somewhat uh, compromised. So, one of the challenge to a democracy is it leads to political instability where the change in the government also leads to change in its domestic and foreign policy particularly about trade or uh, same uh, immigration and so on. Now, this uh, uh, frequent changes in government that leads to uh, changes in the policies creates a condition where a lot of social and economic uh, transformation and opportunity for uh, investment or uh, development is somewhat lost. And therefore, you have seen particularly in uh, many countries in Asia and Africa, particularly developing countries for whom many societies have this opinion that a undemocratic or a kind of authoritarian regime is far more desirable for social and economic transformation in comparison to democracy. And democracy is seen as somewhat a, a system of rule for those who can afford it. So, the uh, real uh, priority for this society is social or economic uh, growth and development and transformation and also poverty alleviation. So, if that is the topmost priority of the nation or the country, then many people argue that it is best to be governed by the authoritarian regime. So, in comparison to say China and India, we see many people that uh, in comparison to uh, Chinese economic uh, transformation and development, India is far more lagging behind. However, what distinguishes between the two countries the idea of a democratic functioning multi party uh, system of democratic uh, rule in India and one party regime in China. Uh, so, uh, this kind of comparison is also there, but however, what we uh, have to understand that the economic transformation or development in a democracy leads to its wider redistribution in society and not in the concentration of wealth. So, the political democracy or democratic system of rule provides the opportunity to individual to prosper or to develop and express themselves freely without any restrictions or constraints by the government. In the undemocratic authoritarian regime, the very freedom of doing something or expressing oneself freely and expressly is compromised to a great extent even when there is some basic social and economic needs are met. So, one of the challenge or criticism to 
democracy is this political instability that leads to changes in the uh, policies of the government. The next is the short term goals. So, all the democratic leaders and the political parties will care to um, formulate the policy which will serve the short term interest and uh, keeping in mind the next election or getting uh, support in the next election. And that leads to a kind of compromise to the long term visions and long term goals of the society. So, for example, say the climate change or the uh, social and economic transformation which requires long term planning or long term investment. So, in a democratic system as the parties and leaders are largely governed by the short term goals or uh, all the policies are directed towards gaining the support in the next election, then these long term goals and uh, objectives are compromised somewhat. The other challenge for the democracy uh, is the illiteracy and the economic inequality in society. So, uh, if uh, the voter or the electorates are not educated enough to exercise their democratic rights to vote prudently, then that democratic system of rule is always open for manipulation uh, by the uh, politician. So, uh, the illiteracy is one of the biggest challenge uh, for the democracy because people do not uh, recognize the significance of their vote and the money and muscle power plays a role in securing the votes where people do not take decisions um, you know, prudently and do not recognize the significance of their vote in uh, selecting the rulers or selecting the parties or the uh, representative uh, of the people. So, politicians may take advantage of the uh, voters illiteracy and Lipset had argued about the need of educated population in for forming democracy. In many of the developing countries in Asia and Africa, a majority of people are still uneducated and lives in poverty and therefore, their political rights are open for manipulation. So, if people are unaware of uh, their political or democratic rights or if they are too poor, then they may not exercise these democratic or political rights uh, effectively and therefore, for the functioning of uh, effective democracy, a literate or educated population with certain degree of economic uh, prosperity is absolutely necessary and therefore, many people argue that the economic uh, development provides the conducive environment and circumstances for the functioning of a democratic system of rule. And in absence of that, democracy in those countries and societies where there is deeply um, economic divide or uh, large uh, or the majority of uh, population are illiterate, then the democracy or democratic system of rule is open uh, for manipulation and so on. So, the illiteracy and economic inequality is the major challenges to democratic processes and outcomes. The next is the post truth politics which is somewhat a recent phenomena especially with the rise of social media and new forms of communication and technology. So, this is the new form of challenges to democracy all over the world and this popular democracy which tends to uh, trigger the emotions and the psychologically uh, driven statements and policies by the parties uh, are the biggest beneficiaries of the post truth politics. So, in 2015, media and political scholar uh, Jason Harrison, Jason Harrison coined the term regime of post truth and in post truth politics, debate is framed largely by appeals to emotions disconnected from the details of policy and by repeated assertion of talking points to which factual rebuttals are ignored. So, in this post truth regime, you have the statements made again and again by the political party and its ideologue which uh, triggers certain emotions and the actual dispassionate rebuttal on the basis of truth is somewhat ignored or somewhat sidelined. So, the defining trait of post truth politics is the 
campaigners continue to repeat their talking point even when the experts in the field and others provide proof to the contrary. So, the opinion of experts or the truth really does not matter. So, there is one statement which uh, defines this functioning of post-truth era. So, if you do not know the answer, you can say anything which may not be the lie, but which will be a kind of uh, rebuttal of the actual is issue or do not respond to the uh, actual issue. So, this post-truth regime gives you the scope to make the points even when that point is not direct to the uh, questions or the issue that is at stake. And the expert opinion or the actual fact or the truth is somewhat ignored and uh, the lies or the doctored or the manipulated uh, statements or uh, the news becomes the guiding measures. So, a political commentators have identified post-truth politics ascending in many democratic countries, especially in the United States, India and United Kingdom among many other democracies. So, these are the other major challenges of democratic processes and outcomes in the contemporary times. Now, if you look at democracy and its features, John Dewey writes that a democracy is more than a form of government. It is primarily a mode of associated living of conjoint communicated experience. So, John Dewey explanation of democracy is something which is much beyond a system of rule which teaches uh, the individual and the community to live together or to live an associational life. So, in his celebrated work Democracy in Education, Dewey sought to compare democratic method to scientific method in which public is conceived as a community of inquirers trying to solve their common problems and freedom of speech, elections and other democratic institutions maintained by liberal democracy enable people to adopt rational attitudes in politics. So, beyond the irrationality, psychological or the emotional issues, people began to argue or communicate and participate in a rational manner if they take this mechanism of liberal democracy effectively and use it effectively. So, a successful democratic politics does not depend on the judgment of each citizen considered separately. So, the voice of each citizens matter in a democratic setup, but it does not matter independently or separately from the rest. When people arrive at judgment, through their constant interaction. So, what matters is interaction, dialogue and deliberation that we have discussed in the models of democracy. And their decision is likely to be rational and sound when they uh, discuss in a free and uh, fair manner on public issue in public platform where uh, nobody is denied uh, his or her participation and they participate and argue in a rational manner. So, the chances are when uh, uh, the system of rule ensures broader participation, the decisions it takes or the policy that it formulates are most rational and sound taking into account the consideration. So, it ensures the uh, rational um, attitude uh, to politics where uh, the freedom of speech and expressions or frequent elections ensures that the decisions are taken through the collective discussion or deliberation. However, democracy has its own effects, but no government is a panacea for all the social and political evils. Democracy is still better than other forms of government such as aristocracy, oligarchy or dictatorship. So, there are different uh, forms of government, but in comparison to their defects or demerits, Democracy is found to be still a better form of government and democracy is preferred form of government across the world and the idea of democracy as we have discussed has become the legitimizing, uh, legitimizing idea of modern times where even the undemocratic or authoritarian regime legitimize their rule in the name of democracy. So, the idea or the power of idea is very much acknowledged across the globe among the different uh, system of rule. John Stuart Mill argued 
that after giving full weight to all that appeared to me well grounded in the arguments against democracy, I unhesitatingly decided in its favor. So, press, people and political parties have now freedom to criticize the government and this freedom to criticize the government uh, that one elects is possible and permitted only in a democratic system of rule. So, on this basis while acknowledging the various challenges and limits to democracy, still one can argue that the future of democracy is bright and it is likely to remain a preferred form of government. Of course, there will be challenges, there will be criticism, defects and demerits to democratic system of rule, but it is a kind of ever expanding and inclusive system of rule which ensures the popular participation and uh, gradually taking everyone along in the social and economic transformation in the any society through popular participation. So, uh, now if you look at briefly the relationship between free press and democracy which is regarded as absolutely necessary for the effectiveness, transparency and accountability of government in a democratic system of rule. So, Thomas Jefferson said that our liberty depends on the freedom of press. So, the our here is the say the liberty of the individual. So, the guardian or the protector of individual liberty is the freedom of press. So, a free press ensures that the government which has the uh, monopoly of violence uh, or the state which has the monopoly of violence should not take away the liberty that is guaranteed to the individual by the constitution in a democratic system. So, in a democratic society individuals as citizen has certain inalienable rights and for the protection of those rights it is necessary to have a free press. So, Jefferson argues that the our liberty depends on the freedom of press and that cannot be limited without being lost. So, the liberty can be lost when you uh, do not have freedom of press. So, freedom of press or a free press is regarded as absolutely necessary for the effective functioning of democracy. It ensures the accountability of the government. Jefferson understood that a vibrant and free press is critical to sustaining, critical for sustaining the rule of law. Beside popular discourse and literature in which the press is held as the fourth state invoke this argument where the vibrancy of a democracy is seen in terms of freedom of press. So, how vibrant a country is in terms of a democracy is seen how much freedom is given to the press to express its opinion independently to criticize the government when there is some violation of rules and procedures. So, along with free speech a free press is indispensable for uh, people to be informed about the decisions of the government and its policies and to participate in the democratic processes. A free press contributes to the transparency of government and a free press serve as a kind of watchdog monitoring government activities and ensuring its accountability and transparency. So, uh, a free press uh, ensures that the government is accountable to the people, it provides information about government decisions to the people to take informed uh, decisions and participate in the democratic process in an empowered manner and that leads to the effectiveness in the functioning of government and it, uh, transparency and also accountability. So, particularly in the age of uh, digital news or where the news and information is available and accessible in a very easily manner to everyone, free media outlets can act as a forum, a place in which people from all backgrounds discuss different issues and ideas that concerns them. And transparency makes a government works better, decrease the risk of corruption, ultimately makes a country safer. So, a free peace ensures that the government functions according to the rules and procedures uh, under which it should uh, perform or, or all its uh, functions. If it transgresses that, 
it highlights, it exposes the government to public scrutiny and that ensures that no corruption, no manipulation and such things is taken place. And if it does, there has to be a political or the electoral uh, cost to uh, and, uh, such manipulations or transgressions. So, uh, however, change in the technology, particularly the social media and the way people consume news now have brought newer challenges such as fabricated or doctor news. That leads to erosion of trust in the media and erosion of trust in institutions also whether it is media or legal profession weakens the foundation of a democratic system. So, in this new era or new digital era where the news is often doctor or fabricated, the challenge is to uh, reassert or reform the trust that one has uh, with media which is regarded as the fourth pillar of democracy, the other three being the executive legislature or the judiciary. Uh, free media in a, uh, or free press in a democracy work as a watchdog, as the fourth pillar of uh, democracy which face a lot of credibility issue in this new digital age where the way people consume news or the way it is uh, presented to them is largely through fabrication or indoctrination which actually make people apprehensive or suspicious to the news that they uh, read and that creates a lot of erosion of trust and it further leads to the weakening of uh, democratic foundation in a democratic country. So, the threats, attacks, government suppressions, accusations of fake news and a growing mistrust of the me, um, media all threaten the freedom of press across the world. Journalists today face unprecedented hardship for simply pursuing the truth. So, the truth has a uh, universal value in a democratic uh, system or in ensuring that government is um, accountable to the rule. And freedom of press was one uh, such platform which ensures that the truth is pursued. But in contemporary societies, we have seen that how journalists who pursue truth is persecuted. They face threat from the community, from the government and also the acquisition of fake news to the media which questions or which interrogates the government makes the functioning of uh, a free media absolutely challenging. And freedom of press and speech are the, however, cornerstone of an, any democracy and when that is threatened so is freedom. So, with the uh, reduction or with the limits to the freedom of press, it also leads to reduction in the freedom that individual as a citizen enjoy in a democracy. So, beyond political divides, freedom of press transcends party and should be protected by everyone. So, uh, the freedom of press has to be beyond partisan politics. It should be a bipartisan issue where everyone should come forward to protect and promote free press. John Eastwood Mill has rightly argued that truth is the enemy of government control and the freedom of press is the only way to ensure that press is not mere a propaganda of political parties and it works for the interest of the people. So, the last point uh, then we will conclude this uh, connection between freedom of free press and democracy. So, uh, Thomas Erskine's speech during the trial of Thomas Paine in 1792 sum up why do we need a free press. Uh, he argued that you cannot deal with things you do not know about and you can only move forward from where you are. So, when you uh, have the knowledge about what you are, only from there you can move forward. So, do not we want to know where we are, do not we want to know what is real and what is not. So, what is truth or what is fake? The truth is hard to take sometimes, it is not always convenient. It may not be convenient for those who exercise power or those who are in the government. It may not be convenient to many communities, but still truth has its own value. So, it can be disappointing or may not be convenient, it can also be ugly, but knowing 
having information about ourselves and the world we live in that is the reality is part of our national identity. Our democracy relies on an informed citizenry, thoughtful, fair, balanced, comprehensive reporting in print and in photos or videos may be the best way to know what is going on, the way to best inform ourselves. Information is what keeps us free from tyranny. So, that is the role of uh, free press in terms of making oneself aware of what is going on about the reality and also how to move forward from the from that reality, however inconvenient, however ugly or, or, or uh, disappointing that truth may be, but that is necessary for us to take a uh, step forward or to move forward in, uh, in the life as an individual or collective identity. So, information which is provided by a free press is therefore absolutely necessary which keeps us free from any kind of tyranny or tyrannical rule. So, thus a free press is regarded as absolutely necessary for democracy. So, I hope you understand now what is uh, the significance of free press in a democracy and the functioning of the effective democracy. In the absence of free press, there is no public scrutiny of government which exercises enormous legal power, monopoly of violence. It is a free press which ensures or which exposes the government and its functioning if it transgress or bypass certain rules and established procedures. So, a free press is uh, therefore regarded as sine qua non for the modern uh, democracy. So, with that we conclude this lecture and you can refer to some of these books to understand some of the themes that we have discussed in today's lectures. So, that is all on this lecture today and with that we conclude this lecture on democracy. The next topic is citizenship which we discuss in the coming lectures. So, thank you for listening and thank you all.